So another main piece of equipment that we have in the laboratory is uh, three-dimensional motion analysis. So we have a Vicon system, which is the same technology they use for computer-generated graphics for 3D gaming or in movies like they have in Polar Express or the Transformers. Uh, we use that same technology to evaluate people's movements during daily activities. So what they'll do is they'll come into the lab, we'll set them up with reflective markers, which are little um, small balls filled with reflective tape, which is the same uh, reflective material you have on running shoes or safety vests. Um, we attach that to the body through wraps and tape to evaluate the movement of patients as they do tasks like walking. Um, so people with stroke were interested in how they're able to use their affected side to ambulate or walk around. Uh, and people with knee replacement were interested in sit to stand. Um, so there's another task we'll do or stair climbing. We have instrumented steps within the laboratory as well to look at movement. And athletic populations were interested in how they do more demanding tasks like jumping, um, single leg and double leg jumping, or even cutting activities. So we're using a paper and pencil instrument that was developed in Australia and it's actually only been published three times. Um, what it focuses is on is three domains. One is uh, emotional factors like fear or frustration with your operated knee and how that limits your ability to perform or how that may limit your participation in sports. The second is related to confidence, so how confident are the athletes in their ability to perform the task or how their knee will perform during sports tasks. And the last is the athlete's self-appraisal of their injury risk. So how risky do they think it is to participate in sports or how at risk might they be if they did do sports? And the tool is only 12 questions long, but the score on that psychological tool correlates to how their knee performs during jump tasks, how they load the knee, how much their knee bends under um, landing from a jump or taking off from a jump more strongly than it has with traditional questionnaires that have focused on how much swelling do you have, how much pain is there, um, how, how stiff is your knee. So really it's a tool that athletes can get, we can get a lot of information about athletes that we're not using in regular practice. And what's most exciting is looking at those psychological factors applies to how someone moves and how they expose their knee to stress to make their muscles stronger, maybe overload their cartilage. So those psychological factors is something that's going to be a factor we look at in physical therapy as something we need to address to really enhance performance beyond just making a weak muscle stronger. So we'll bring people into the classroom and use that equipment to see the forces while people move that really is just impossible to see without the force plates and video equipment that we have within the lab. Um, the other piece of the lab is really unique is that it gives us a speed of capture of data that exceeds what we normally have with just a regular digital camcorder. So a digital camcorder goes about 30 frames a second. We have in the lab does the same resolution at 370 frames a second. So it's just breaking it down in that that small chunks to look at how something that's really fast can be slowed down to look at how the body adapts to that, I think is a powerful tool. Um, if you look at the forces of someone jumping off of even a curb, they can have four body weights of fourth force acting on their limb in six hundredths of a second. It's just impossible to appreciate that without the lab. The other piece that's really neat about the lab is once we make a three-dimensional video, the ability to move that perspective of where you're looking at the person while, they, while they're performing the task is, is really unique. So it's hard to appreciate movements in the horizontal plane by looking at them from the front or the side. So the best would be looking at the top or the bottom. Well, with the 3D cameras, we can do that. We can position the person whatever way that we'd like and slow them at whatever speed that we want. So it really is a nice way to experience and learn through science and the tools of science to enhance what we offer in the classroom.